All right, so in the last video, we were looking at this example here. It was a, uh, it was a volume integral given to us as a triple integral in, in rectangular coordinates, x, y, z coordinates. And, and we realized that you know, there, there's a much simpler way to describe this region. We, can, you know, we did it in terms of rectangular coordinates, but really what we have here is we're saying that, well, z is between r and the square root of 8 minus r squared where r ran from 0 to 2 and theta ran from 0 to pi. And that let us set up this integral. Um, and, and so we did the z integral as usual, and then we just took the integral over x and y and we converted to polar coordinates. Um, turns out that this description of the region is exactly a cylindrical coordinate description of the region. Um, so here's what, the, uh, here's what the cylindrical coordinate transformation looks like. Uh, let me give you the formulas first, and then we'll, we'll draw the picture so you can see how this fits in. Okay, so we define x to be r cos theta. We define y to be r sine theta. z, well, we just leave z as z, okay? So z said is just said, and our volume element, dv, right, um, becomes r, dz, dr, d theta, right? Uh, as usual for triple integrals, you're not bound to do it in this order, but this is normally the most natural order when you're doing a triple integral, is because, because cylindrical coordinates are, are, are very much adapted for this scenario where once you've done the integral over z, you're left with something that is more natural in polar coordinates. So you do the z integral, and then you do a polar coordinate integral. Okay, that's kind of, that's what you're doing. Um, the, the picture that you should have in mind looks something like this. Okay. Why... Why is this called the cylindrical coordinate system? Well, it's called the cylindrical coordinate system because what you're basically doing is you're specifying where you are in three-dimensional space by, well, let's do it this way. First, you give an, a value for r. So you say, okay, I'm going to choose, you know, r is equal to a. So what does r equal to a look like, right? Well, remember this in, in polar coordinates, it's just a circle of radius a. So we draw a circle of radius a centered at the origin. I'm going to leave that dashed for reasons that will become apparent fairly soon. Okay, But it doesn't say anything about z. So really when you say r equals a, well, you're, you're saying that you could be anywhere. on this cylinder, okay? So specifying the R coordinate tells you where you are on the cylinder, right? So we've got, we've got A. Let's mark that in another color. Okay, so there's A, all right? Okay, so now you know you're on this cylinder. Where do you go from here? Well, the next thing you might do is, is you might specify you might specify a value for, for theta, right? So we say theta is equal to, I don't know, alpha. Why not? Or theta naught, however you want to do it. What does that look like? Well, that means now that you're basically taking a, you know, sort of a half plane. Coming down like so, right? So you have this sort of half plane like this, where theta is the angle that's measured from the, from the positive x-axis, as usual. Well, that half plane, you'll notice that it intersects, it intersects your cylinder along a line. Like so. Sorry, I know that was a terrible line. Okay, 
So we get that, that intersection like that. And the last thing I need to do if I want to tell you where I am in space is I need to tell you where on this. So now I know I'm on this line, right? So giving you the value for r puts me on the cylinder. Giving you the value for theta puts me on this line. I guess I should have said alpha, right? It's um, alpha is the particular measure of theta that we're using here. And so now to tell you where I am on that line, that's a vertical line. So all I have to do to tell you where I am on that line is give you a z coordinate. So if I say z equals, I don't know, uh, let's say z naught, right? Choose that point to z naught. Well, I know that that's just a plane parallel to the xy plane, right? And if I kind of go out along this, you know, I go at this angle theta, that tells me where I am, okay? So now I've located my point. So, I mean, and you, you don't have to do it in this order. I guess you could, you could decide that you're going to give z first. So you start kind of at the origin. You travel up a certain distance. Uh, then maybe you give the angle. You point a certain direction. And then you walk out in, uh, in a direction where you keep your z constant um, by a distance of a, right? There's various ways of doing it. Um, but this is the idea of the, of the cylindrical coordinate system. It is cylindrical because you're on a cylinder. So you think about locating points in terms of where they are on a cylinder, right? So, so A specifies the cylinder, theta and Z tell you where on the cylinder you happen to be, right? So if you want to know where you are on, on a cylinder, you just need to know how far up or down you should be and where you are as you go around, right? So these coordinates tell you where you are on the cylinder. This one tells you which cylinder you're on. That's the cylindrical coordinate system.